Hi there. We're in the garden again, and I've something really interesting to show you. I suppose you could describe it as my lockdown project. You will know from my previous videos, I like building things. I always like to have a, a project on the go. So you've got the, the research, you're learning about something new, and then you're building something. So I always like building something. Behind me, you can see our summer house. I built that a few years ago. Really interesting to build. And the roof, building a hip roof, really, really uh, took a bit of working out that. But at the end of the day, it was a great project to build. And we make good use of it. It's a nice place to sit and drink at night. And my two sons, uh, they certainly make use of it, having all their friends round. Uh, when they're allowed, of course. Now, on the 21st of March this year, Boris shut down all the pubs, which was the right thing to do. But I miss the pubs, and especially the handful beer. So I decided the answer was to build my own shed pub in the garden. It, it started out by just installing a hand pump on the bench, a container of beer, but then it developed into thought, well I might as well convert the bench into a bar, and then I thought I might as well convert the shed into a pub. It's how things go. Now one advantage of owning your own pub is the opening times. I'm usually open around nine o'clock in the morning and I don't shut till midnight. If it's a nice sunny day, we might open up early at eight o'clock. Now, the pub is hidden away at the top of the garden. So come with me and we'll go and have a closer look. So we'll head up the garden now. Now this area here, bit of a mess at the moment. It did have a big wood store. Again, 25 years old and all the roof had gone. So I've cleared that out and I've got a new wood store to build. And the area will become a beer garden. More of that in a later video. So this is my old shed here. It's about 25 years old, but still in good nick. I've actually raised it up off the ground, probably about a foot or so, and put it on steel girders, so it should uh, prevent it from rotting. Let's see what we've got in here. Well, it is a garden shed. What a disappointment. It's full of garden tools, a lawnmower. Mind you, there is a fridge at the other end. That looks promising. But I did expect something else. But hang on a minute. There's a secret door here. Let's have a look in there. Wow, look what I found, a secret pub. Look at that, complete with a well-stocked bar and a hand pull. This looks interesting. I think we'll have a look in here. Well, welcome to my pub. It hasn't actually got a name yet, so it's sort of known as the pub with no name at the moment. Uh, it will have one at some point. So I'm just going to get myself another drink, I think.
Well, like I say, this project started out by just installing the hand pump and then it, it sort of grew. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but the lighter coloured pine is actually a workbench. I built that 25 years ago and that was already in. So that gave me a, a good point to mount the hand pump. And at the same time, I thought, well, I can then convert that into a bar area. A lot of the, the walls are sort of clad with 10mm ply. So you could imagine that is one piece of plywood. I put teak stain on the bottom, painted the top, and a bit of dado just to divide it really. But a lot of it is just simply made out of plywood and then a, a cheek stain on. So what I'm gonna do, I'll quickly show you around and then I'll show you in more detail after, after that. So this is a bar area. I've got all my, my glasses. Main thing is the hand pump. I got various optics uh, with the gin, vodka, all your, your standard spirits and that. Not all of them are full, uh, they for show a little bit, but uh, the gin's definitely full. So, in this compartment here, which I'll show you later, there's a fridge. And that's got the beer in. That keeps the beer at a, a nice, uh, between 10 and 12 degrees C. Keeps it a, a ni nice temperature. But I'm going to show you more about the beer in, uh, in a minute or so. You can see under the bench, I've put uh, doors on. So there's plenty of storage under there for bottles, mixers all the cleaning stuff I need etc. On the walls put a bit of shelving up. I haven't quite completed the walls yet. I need to, to cover it whether in beer towels, trays, beer mats, all adds to it. So I, I've, I've got the, uh, the walls to finish off. Now the seating. Uh, I enjoyed making this. It's just made out of plywood formed a nice big bench seat, you can get about four people on there. It's just a piece of plywood, a piece of foam, and I bought the drill on, I bought four metres of burgundy drill on, 30 quid, and I've managed to make all the seating out of that. The stools, um, I've got two stools, I actually bought these on eBay at Barnsley. Uh, so I know where they come from. They come out of uh, Oiland, Tappan, Spire or Spile. Uh, there was a, a micro pub up there and the people I bought it off said they used to own it. So these come out of a, a proper, proper micro pub. This has got a nice top on it. I'm keeping that. The other one there, I'm going to reupholster that. Again, I got this beautiful material, a roll end. But uh, I think I got... I bought a metre and a half, they were only 12 quid, uh, it should have been about £30 a metre but because it was the roll end they're literally giving it away. So yeah, that's a nice rainy day job, get me sewing machine out and upholster that uh, stool. Beautiful little table, it's known as a Britannia table because that is the a casting of Britannia. It's solid as anything. You can't knock that over. That was my birthday present in May. My wife bought me that. I thought, what, what better present can you have than a pub table? Ideal it is. So yeah, that's my pub table. I'm trying to think anything else to tell you about. Ah, the carpet. Look at that. Um, oh, Prince of Wales feathers. I wanted a traditional pub carpet, so I went down to Benson's, uh, I think it was the first day they opened after uh, the coronavirus, the lockdown, 
and I saw this and I thought, I've got to have it, it's beautiful. And again, it was a Roland, um, but it was a little bit more than I wanted to pay, so I managed to knock him down 20 quid. I think it was his first day opening, he probably thought, well, at least I've made a sale, even if I haven't made any profit. So, yeah, nicer uh, fleur de lis carpet, uh, just perfect it is. What I'll do now, I'll try and swing the camera around, etc., and I'll show you looking the other way, and uh, then we'll go around and we'll, we'll look at stuff in a, a bit more detail. Nice drop of beer, this. Just swap the camera around so you can see the other side of the pub. You can see, got some nice wall lights up. I wanted this to, I don't want it modern, I'm happy with a 1940s, 50s sort of era, like a cosy, snug type bar. The lights are, pick them up on eBay, I think they come from some re reclamation yard so they they made of brass quite old and I, I thought they fitted the um, environment I wanted to sort of create. The door itself, now I had to keep reminding myself at the end of the day it's only a hut, it's not a work of art, it's a hut. So the door I actually made out of two packs of plywood I got from Wix. If I were making some like cabinets in the house or something like that I'd use solvent wood dye and solvent varnish and it takes a day literally to put everything on every coat on so it might take you three or four days to build and varnish or something that door I did in one day I basically built it out of plywood I stained it with water dye which were a bit rubbishy but it got me a a finish it's not it's only a hut at the end of the day and then I had some water based varnish it was garbage it was like putting white paint on but you could recoat it every hour so I got three coats of varnish on and then hung the door in one day so I don't like the water based stuff for the quality and the workmanship but it allowed me to get on and do things a lot quicker This is so smooth, it goes down lovely. We'll talk a bit more about the beer in a bit. Beautiful. Just let that settle. So like I say, I put the lighting in. I actually used 20 metres of lighting cable. The enjoyable part of this with all the different skills. You've got wiring, a lot of uh, carpentry, bit of plumbing for the hample, the fridge side of it, you've got to learn about fridges. Uh, the upholstery, carpet fitting. That's the thing I liked about it. it. It needed about a dozen different skills to build it, which were, which was enjoyable. Oh, it is the one drawback, if I could say that. You've got beautiful, ample beer on top, so you just walk up here in the morning. And it's there looking at you. Now you have to check it. You want to see that it's the right temperature. And it's possibly cleared. So it does require quite a bit of checking. But basically that's the construction of the place. The enjoyable part now. Is buying all the glasses. Uh, the beer mats. The beer trays. To decorate it with. So I'm looking forward to that. But uh, what I'll do now. I'll take you around with the camera, just in a little bit more detail, just point out a few things, 
and then we'll we'll have a talk about the uh, the Hampel beer system. I'll show you a closer view of the bar area. So we've got a couple of uh, optic bottles up there. If you want the bottles with the labels the other way up for the optic bottles, I found they were nearly all 1.5 litre bottles. Now the sapphire gin bottles more or less full because I, I like that gin. The vodka bottle is empty. I have two 20 year old sons at home who drink vodka. So I thought it was probably better not to put temptation in front of them and leave it empty. And down at the bottom, got some nice looking gin glasses, the big fish bowl glasses. We're getting quite refined up north, you know. We can drink gin with anybody now. Uh, we like a drop of gin up north. And then various lager glasses along the top. There's some really nice uh, pills type glasses. Uh, I tend to pull, drink my ample beer out of those. Um, and below are various tankards. Um, I think a couple of them have been won on fishing matches and various other things. As we come further over, there's more optics. Probably, if you can just make out in that far corner, an optic, you've basically got a simple aluminium framework and then the bottle clips in and you've got your optic measure at the bottom. So there isn't much to an optic at all. You sometimes wonder how the weight of it stays up there. And dropping down, there's a hampel. We'll talk about that a bit more. And on the bar, various bar runners, beer mats, intend getting a few more beer towels and that. So that is sort of the bar area. The main part of any pub is the bar. So we're going to have a look at the sort of the fridge and the a brief look at the beer system I've set up. So we'll open this fridge up. This was the first thing I put in the fridge before I decided to turn it into a more of a pub. So inside there you've got the beer. Now the beer is in a plastic bag in a box. That's as, as simple as that. You can buy that direct from the brewery. 20 litre or 10 litre beer in a box. It's, it's so simple. That actually is, I know it says moonshine on the hand pump, it's Kellum Island Brewery and it's their Easy Rider beer. I got 20 litres for 50 quid and I went on the internet in the morning and I thought I don't want it to probably next week so I kind of paid for it thinking it would give me a delivery day and it didn't. And then about four hours later there's a knock on the door bloke from the brewery said we've dropped your beer off it's on the doorstep and there it was what service so yeah i i had got it a bit earlier than that's what i wanted but no problem 50 quid 20 liters nearly 40 pints that's what 125 a pint for hand pulled beer not bottled beer so yeah so the 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 beer side of it i'm going to do a separate video in detail from cleaning putting the beer in a lot more detail but briefly I'll tell you about it so like I say the beer it could be your own home brew for 50 quid I'll buy it is in that box in a plastic bag it's coupled up and then you can probably just see there I've got a thermostat uh, that will keep the beer at a nice where well, it's actually spot on 11 degrees uh, I've set it 11 degrees plus or minus one degree so that that keeps it at a nice temperature uh, it might be in winter when it gets cold in here I'll put a light bulb in as a form of heater but that little thermostat uh, it'll control heating and refrigeration great little device 
you can probably just see the beer line there so it comes out the fridge I did have to drill holes in the fridge which was a bit scary I just drilled I kind of poked through found all the insulation there were no cooling pipes and drilled through so I've got a, a hole for the beer line a hole for the thermostat but more of that on another video so then we came over this side here the beer line comes over and straight into the to the bottom of the hand pump I know it says moonshine but it is Kellam Island Easy Rider so that is the beer setup it's uh, it's so simple if you wanted to do it as like the the minimum you could do buy yourself a hand pump a bit of pipe work and a few other connectors connect it up to a bag of beer and you're away in summer it'll get warm so you need a fridge really but if you were in like autumn winter you can have ample beer as easy as anything it takes very little that beer pump there it's actually a, an Angram beer pump the, the one of the main ones that the pubs use I bought it as a refurbished and pump it's RLBS no idea what it stands for I bought it from there they'd refurbished it come changed all the seals and I was happy to pay I think I paid about 160 quid I can't remember 160 180 quid you can get them a lot cheaper on eBay whether the seals are good and what they've pumped through I don't know but I was uh, happy to pay and have it straight away and knew it would be working so that is one of the most important things the fridge and the hand pump and the beer set up so we're going to have a, a closer look at the hand pump now we'll have a a brief look at hand pumps so basically the hand pump you could say credit for inventing it goes to Joseph Brammer a Barnsley lad 1797 he basically developed the hand pump from earlier inventions but I think credit can go to Joseph Brammer for the hand pump 1797 and it's hardly changed since. If it works, why change it? Barnsley as well. So that's where your hand pumps originated from. There's various makes. Like I say, this is an Angram one. Real brass, nicer, uh, probably oak plinth. It's just nice, it's nice. Every drink you pull, I quite often drink halves because it's a pleasure to pull every drink. So this, they come in two versions, a half pint and a quarter pint. This is a quarter pint, so one pull gives you a quarter pint of beer out. I prefer the quarter pint because I quite often drink out of these, these half glasses here. Another feature, it's a CQ this, it's got a, that's a model. It's got two pipe outlets there. It's got a water jacket round the, the main cylinder. So you can connect a cooler up so the beer in the hand pump there's always a quarter of a pint and your cooler will cool that beer so your beer is always at the right temperature I might do in the future when it gets a bit more something interesting to do but I'm okay with the first quarter of a pint being a little bit warm I'm okay with that but it's an interesting feature now a bit more about it this is a swan neck uh, and this little device on the end, the plastic device, is called a sparkler. The swan neck is what we have up north. And I know there is a big divide on how we serve our beer from down south to down north. I'm definitely a northern drinker. Down south is like... Well, I'll try and explain a little bit about it. So we've looked at the hand pump. So, if imagine we're down south. So we've gone down south for a few days. I don't think they know what a sparkler is down south. 
So you ask for a pint down south. It sometimes have like a watering can outlet on or something like that. All right, off, hang on, I'm gonna use me half. So the southern drink. This is down south. And you imagine that's a pint, and he says, "There you are, sir. That'll be five eighty." And you look at it and you think, "But well, there's no head on it." Now I know there is an argument. Southerners say we bash the natural carbonation out of the beer by pulling it through a tight sparkler. But up north, we drink with our eyes first. And we want to look at a nice pint and you think, that looks nice, I'm going to enjoy it. And it is definitely smoother. So we'll now pull a northern pint. So put the sparkler on. This is a 0.6 millimeter sparkler. Northern beer, this one. So it forces the natural carbonation. It does force it out. I can see the point they've got down south, but I drink with my eyes first. So that's your northern pint. You can see the difference. That is a mass of little bubbles all gently rising to the top and it forms a nice tight creamy head and to me that is what a pint should look like so when barman pulls me that I think ah, that's a nice pint that looks nice and it, you'll say hey got a nice pint here we're having another well, shall we stop for another yeah we'll stop for another because it looks nice if we go in and they serve us that. All right, I get your point. We've knocked the carbonation out, but it doesn't look nice. I dare say it tastes okay. Yeah, the taste is there. It's not as smooth. It doesn't go down. That is creamier and smoother. It's still a nice beer, it's still a nice beer, but you've lost something uh, to me. I like to see a nice creamy head on my beer before I drink it. So yeah, there always has been and always Bill will be an ongoing debate on uh, the best best way to pull a pine. But I, down south I don't think they have this one next sparkler. To me it looks like a watering can and they just squirt it in and I've often said can't you get me a head on that beer and they hold it down here then and just squirt it in like that and it, and it comes up to me it looks like dirty dishing up water um, and they, you just can't get through to them that no you don't pull a pint like that we have it with a nice tight head on it so that to me is a northern pine I'm going to drink it all in one go. As you can see, the head, it's sort of, it's clung to the glass all the way down. And to me, that is what a proper pint should be like. But they do it like they say, we do up north, we drink with our eyes. Although I have found, I go on various days out, or I said, I used to go, on various days out for a drink and we've gone we've gone down to Birmingham um, Leicester Lincoln Manchester Leeds and Sheffield has nice beer Manchester oh they are beautiful beer and some of my favorite pubs are in Manchester uh, when I think of them yeah Peveril of the Peak City Arms Circus Monkey, Three-Legged Mare. Oh, there were some nice pubs there. Yeah, we had some great days in Manchester. 
and Birmingham, although we've gone further south, Shakespeare, Wellington, Old Contemptible, um, not the Chop House, I can't remember the name of it, uh, Post Office Vaults, they're all, they all seem to serve with the long neck, swan neck sparkler. So I would say the North is the preferred method of drinking and it is spreading down south. It's just when I've gone on train journeys down as far as London and various other places, they don't put a sparkler on and they just have a this watering can thing effect straight into the top of your glass. But it's uh, it's uh, I'm sure it will create a bit of debate as which is the best. But that is definitely a smoother, a smoother drink. I must admit, since I've had this hand pull in, I don't often drink pints. I've been using I like these, the Carlsberg glasses. I like these because every every drink you pull is a pleasure to pull, and let like you get your technique, and let's see how creamy I can get that head. Uh, so yeah, I tend to drink halves. And I suppose every pine is, is, is fresh. And with it being so warm this summer, excuse me, with it being so warm, it's, even myself, I will resort to lager if it gets really hot. But it is a last resort. Uh, or gin and tonic and ice. But if it, if it gets really hot outside, yeah, you don't want to have a pint stood there. It's better to have a, a half and get cool beer coming through all the time. Oh, very nice. Right, so we have sort of briefly looked at the hand pull. What I intend doing, I'll do this in a future video, I'll go through my complete hand pull beer in a bag setup from where I buy the beer from, get it into the fridge, how I keep it at the right temperature, the connections, there is a demand valve under here and other bits, how I get it to the hand pull and a little bit more, I'll tell you all about cleaning the pipes a whole lot so I will do that in a in a future video so uh, oh I've drunk all my beer I'm just gonna have another pint it's a pleasure each pint is a pleasure to pull don't need a clean glass round here every pint I find if you really that them first few Give it a good solid pull, and then you can ease off, and then just drop it down as the sparkler comes out. But you, you do, I, I mean to tell you the truth, I'll go in more detail, but this is, yeah, it's this Kellum Island uh, Easy Rider which I've got in here, I've had it two weeks and it, it still tastes so right. I mean that, yeah, I probably didn't give it such a hard pull initially and the head is a little bit thin, but it, it, it's not too bad. But yeah, so the bag in the box beers, I'm still not sure how long they'll last. I ask people and they say 10 to 14 days, I'm not too sure, but I've had that 14 days in there and it, it's still pulling all right and it, it still sort of tastes okay. Yeah, I did get, uh, it's still sticking nice but I didn't, I didn't, he says that, that initial pull, give it a good pull, seems to bang a load of uh, air into it or, or gets the, the, the the carbon, natural carbonation out the beer into the, into the glass. 
and you could say that nice frothy head that you get the you seem to get the hop aroma more anyway i can talk for ages on hand pulls but right so we'll, we'll leave it at that and uh we'll have a, a last look uh while i sit and drink my pint It's only two o'clock, but we're up till midnight. Well, I'm not going to show you around because I've already done that. But I hope you've enjoyed the video, and it sort of made you aware that handful beer isn't that difficult. A minimum, one hand pump by an eBay. Might get one for 50 quid. Hopefully it's alright. A box of beer and a bit of pipe and you're away. Why drink fizzy crap beer when so simply you can drink hand pump beer? I've had these boxes of beer from various places. This, like I said, this is Kellam Island, local Sheffield brewery. I've had them from uh, Jolly Sailor Brewery um, at Selby. Click, 50 quid. He brings it down, drops it on my doorstep. Tuesday or a Wednesday, I've got uh, 20 litres of beer. Uh, Selby Pale. I've had, I've had a few of them from up there. So it is so easy. And you can get them all over the country. How they deliver them... I have no idea. 20, 20 litres of beer is 20 kilograms nearly. So, but you, you can put, like, Yeovil Brewery, or I, I think places down south, like Yeovil Brewery, uh, click a button, and 20 litres of beer will arrive on your doorstep, I assume, another day. I've not tried it, but I'm assuming that is how it works. And you can try beers from all over... The UK, um, connect it up, few seconds, connect it up to your hand pump, and boom, you're pulling it, if it's bright beer. So yeah, it is so simple. Anyway, anyway, we keep saying anyway. We're in June, hopefully... July the 4th, I believe everything is happening on July the 4th, you can, women can get their hair cut, you can have a tattoo, you can go camping, so my thoughts on July the 4th, everything or a lot of things will be opening up and hopefully uh, you'll be able to stay overnight so while camping we'll come back in, so I'm hoping in July I'll be out on a wild camp. So anyway, this is the end of the video. So thanks for watching. Anyway, while I'm while I'm here I might as well, might as well have another. I mean it is very such a good oh that it doesn't look so bad you see every every one you pull it's like a work of art how can I get it better that head's a bit thin it'll 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 thicken up a bit but like I say this beer's old it's uh, 14 days I've had it in there which is quite a long time I reckon it's, it's on its limit it still tastes nice but I don't know if his pulse are good, but yeah, it's, uh, when you first get it, oh, it comes up. Anyway, anyway, it's the end of the video, isn't it? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. Right, so, thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. There'll be another video very soon on the beer system, and then hopefully we'll back out while camping. See you then. Bye then. Oh, look at that, right thin head.
Mind you, it still tastes nice. It's still a nice pine.